Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to share my 2021 wardrobe plan, including the things that I won't be wearing in 2021. So let's get started. Anytime I'm planning my wardrobe, I like to always start with inspiration. And I do that because it helps me visualize what I want out of my wardrobe and also what I don't want out of my wardrobe. So I started this process exactly like I always do. I went to Pinterest, it's my favorite place to get inspiration, and I saved anything that caught my eye. But specifically, I did it by going back through my old Pinterest boards. So I have one for spring summer fashion, one for fall and winter fashion, and then a couple more divided by individual things, and I saved to a new board anything that still caught my eye. I don't overcomplicate this, and I just mindlessly save. I feel like if you start to analyze too early in the process, you will get overwhelmed. I know I do, and so I like to just get a nice inspiration session and just save anything that gives me that two-second flutter of, oh, I love that. And then once that's all done, I go back through and analyze those images for common themes and those serve as my goals for my wardrobe. So it's a really helpful way to take something that feels super daunting and make it really tangible. And it's been working for me for a couple years, so I highly recommend it for you as well. The first theme that I noticed throughout my inspiration images and is also a repetitive thing from last year, but with a slight variation, is dresses. So last year, I really wanted to add dresses to my wardrobe. I don't really wear dresses. I've never really worn dresses. I've always preferred pants and shorts, but they're really practical for where I live now because it gets so hot and you can dress them up or dress them down and dresses are like built-in air conditioning. So they're really breathable and nice to wear when it gets super hot and I can wear them in a lot of different ways. So I added a couple into my wardrobe and I played around with styling a lot last year and I did different versions of things with different inspiration like I recommend. And I ultimately figured out what brought me to where I am now is that I really love when dresses or anything that can feel overtly traditionally feminine is paired with something unexpected and even better if it's a little bit toughened up. So I really like that balance of everything. I talked about this in my last video about how I like this contrast typically and I'm learning more about myself and how to dress to the contrast that lies within my own body and I think dresses especially when they have more floaty details up by my face and then they're paired with something a little bit tougher or straighter on the bottom is perfect for me so I'm excited to do more of that this year as well. Another common theme that I noticed throughout my inspiration images is a slightly lighter color palette. So I've learned throughout this last year and a lot of the experiments that I was doing with my personal style that color sometimes plays a bigger impact than the silhouette of something. So I have a lot of really dark kind of serious colors in my wardrobe. My palette tends to lead, lean very dark and that's a combination of a couple things. First, my personal style journey starting when I was living in New York and so darker colors are very practical and then also also my own coloring. In traditional color theory typing systems, I'm a deep winter. I've got basically black hair, really, really dark brown eyes, and depending on the time of the year, pretty high contrast between my hair and eyes and my skin. So I really like rich, dark colors like black and navy, burgundy. So I have a lot of that in my wardrobe. But now that I live somewhere that's warmer and I'm not really in a city and I can walk and take the car and it's just a different lifestyle, I'm starting to add in lighter colors and especially through some of the analyses that I received in my body typing video, one of the recommendations was to wear lighter colors up by my face in order to bring in some of those features and the lighter, brighter, kind of ethereal and ingenue traits. So that's for a whole nother video that we'll definitely be getting into. But this translated in my inspiration images because I noticed I was saving a lot of light colored sweaters paired with lighter denim or darker denim or darker pants but with a lighter sweater things that felt floaty and airy 
and I think things that perfectly relate to how my style is evolving. So I'm really excited to play around with that more as well. Another theme that I saw running throughout the images that I saved, but in a slightly smaller dose, is this idea of fantasy or everyday fantasy and bringing that into my wardrobe in a practical way, a way that I can actually wear. So last year when I did my body typing video, one of the women that I worked with, uh, Rachel, she typed just my face and based on her typing, she said that I had ethereal and ingenue traits within my face. And essentially to manifest that through fashion, you need to look for things that are a little bit lighty, light and floaty, lighter colors, so similar to what I just mentioned, and then also things that feel slightly otherworldly, and that can come through in opal or mother of pearl, um, S shapes, and just delicate glint. And a lot of the images that she shared for inspiration um, surrounding that were so beautiful, but a little bit harder to manifest in my current lifestyle. So I really want to focus on doing that in a practical way this year and a way that I can actually wear and use because I love the idea of dressing in harmony with what makes you unique. And I think that'll be a really fun challenge for me. And that was a theme that I noticed throughout my images as well. And then I also saw a lot of bold jewelry. I really love bold jewelry and bold hoops and bold rings and I'm definitely going to continue to wear those this year and I just love how they can accent even a really basic outfit. They add some glint and some sparkle and it's very much something that I've enjoyed for many years and fully anticipate to love for many many more years to come so leaning into that more is definitely something I want to do. And then also my natural wavy hair texture. I want to continue wearing that and enjoying that. It's been super liberating, a really really great experience for me to lean into that this year this past year so I want to continue that but also have more fun with accessories change it up style it differently and really use my hair as an accent for my wardrobe and play around with how that can change up different looks because I've dabbled a little bit but ultimately I really like ease so I tend to wear my hair the same like the same two ways all the time it's like this and then in the wavy side parted hair that I've been doing lately so I really want to play around with that more and see what else I can come up with in a way that I can use to accent my style. And then I also noticed more color. So like I mentioned a little bit ago, and as you've seen throughout some of my recent videos, I've been expanding my color palette and inviting new colors into my wardrobe. I had a really locked small color palette for a really long time, and I recommend doing that so you can get familiar with what you like and what you don't like and really build a sustainable wardrobe full of things that you always love. So since my wardrobe color palette has been so small, it's been really helpful for that. I've been able to really use everything. Everything mixes and matches. But now that I'm embracing more colors, I'm figuring out how those work within my wardrobe and my existing palette, and I'm having a lot of fun with that. So I want to continue that this year, play around with different color combinations, and possibly add one or two new colors to my wardrobe as well. So we'll see where all of that goes as the year goes on. Now now let's talk about my general style goals for this year. These weren't necessarily reflected in the inspiration images, but they're things that I want to keep top of mind and really focus on. So the first one has to be to get dressed every single day or at least every other day. And that's because like most of you, I'm sure I've been in lockdown or some form of lockdown and social distancing and not really going anywhere. So I've gotten out of the habit of getting dressed. And as a result, I feel like my productivity has slipped and then also I just don't feel as great because I really love putting outfits together So I want to give myself that creative expression and that outlet even if I have nowhere to go So I want to make a concerted effort for that. I also want to um, continue to em embrace this idea of dressing to your individual features and the sharpness and softness within my body and all of the body typing analysis that I received I've been having a lot of fun playing around with that So I want to continue that conversation more this year and keep experimenting and having fun and really seeing um, revelations that I can make and how I can use all of that information to continue to propel my personal style in a way that's really, really fun and interesting and unique, I think. To close out this video, let's talk about the things I won't wear in 2021. So just like last year, these aren't like tangible things like that pair of shoes or that jacket, but rather they're more conceptual and they're 
concepts and thoughts that I'm trying to keep top of mind in order to allow my personal style to ultimately be creative and a journey that is fun. I never want style to feel oppressive or limiting. So these are really helping me do that in this journey. So the first one has to be a continuation of last year and that was restrictive clothing. So just like I said last year, I don't mean restrictive as in tight or I physically can't move, but rather restrictive mentally. There are things that for whatever reason in my mind, I've said, no, I don't wear that or that's not part of my style. And so I don't try them. And that really limits my style. And last year I tried to break out of that and have more, more fun and experiment. So I really want to continue that this year and continue to embrace change and just have some interest and like I said, use it as a creative expression. The next thing that I won't wear in 2021 is anything that hasn't been perfectly tailored to me. Now that is obviously a bit of an exaggeration and a hyperbole, but essentially what I mean is I want to embrace tailoring more. I recommend it all the time. I have so many pieces in my wardrobe that have been tailored as a result of being petite. Most of my clothes need to be tailored. And there are things in my closet that I kind of make do. I can force them a little bit, but I really want to utilize my tailor and get them tailored to me so that I feel really great in everything and take it to the next level. Cause I feel my absolute best in things that have been tailored to my personal body. And so I want to do that more. And I recommend playing around with that yourself. I like to try clothes on in the mirror and then adjust them in little micro adjustments. And it's always amazing the difference that it makes and you can really allow your personal expression to come through and enhance what you love about yourself so i want to do more of that this year the last thing that i won't wear in 2021 is classic without a twist i really love classic pieces they serve as the foundation for my own wardrobe and i recommend them for pretty much everyone i think there's at least one piece that you can find that you'll love for many years making it a classic wardrobe essential so for me i really like outfits that feature those pieces. They allow me to get the most versatility out of my wardrobe, but I've learned recently that I really, really love it when those pieces are paired with something a little bit unexpected. So I want to do more of that this year. And similar to what I did in my How My Style Has Changed video, I want to restyle pieces in slightly different ways and put the outfits side by side so I can really see what I love and what I don't love. It was such a good exercise for me and I think it will continue to be valuable. So I hope that you liked this. I love wardrobe planning. It's probably my favorite part of building a wardrobe and I think that it can be really helpful if you can break down your inspiration and then tangibly dissect it, it can give you a direction and clear focus. So I hope that seeing my process can help you in your own. And like always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Have a great day.